I was going to talk about everything, you know, summarise the whole art, uh, whole blog post, because um, it's just stuffed full of cool stuff, but unfortunately I think I would have literally been talking for, for about 45 minutes, <laughs> so I've had to pare back the whole presentation about three times. Um, I'd like to start with a disclaimer because it's all super, super cutting edge stuff and I've read it like 50 times and all the papers, and all the papers on the papers, like 100 times or whatever, and this is my best attempt at understanding the concept, so just bear with me. Um, but yeah, basically, just a bit of background uh, for those of you not familiar with the blog post. Monzo released their new um, help search algorithm um, in August this year. Um, and it's using really, really like cutting edge um, ML techniques. And I think you can learn quite a lot from it. That's what it looks like just there. <coughs> so basically the challenge that they had is um, that they wanted um, users to be able to write in free text what their problem was, what their question was, um, and for the algorithm to go, go and find it a relevant answer. Um, but NLP um, previously has been pretty, pretty bad at under deriving meaning from um, natural language. It usually works on like keyword searches and stuff. Um, Whereas, you know, most natural languages is like this, it's quite vague. I mean, these are three examples of questions that are basically asking the same thing. <clears throat> but they're completely different, um, different lengths. Um, a lot of stuff in the, le the latter two are quite irrelevant. Um, you know, a, a machine would find it really hard to understand these. Um, so they, they had to overcome this challenge. Um, so before I go into, like, the overall thing of what they did, I'll go into, like, the key, the key parts, and these are just. So I could talk about all of it, but this is just the the main kind of things that I thought were really cool. So um, the first, the first thing, like the first part of the problem was deriving the meaning from what's being input by the by the customer, and so um, they use something called a bidirectional recurrent neural network, which is a bit mouthful, but it's um, just to take you from something that you are familiar with to this concept. Um, if this one on the left is a neural network and you've got your input and hidden layers and output layers, um, then a, a, recurrent, a recurrent neural network um, basically has, um, I don't know if you can see that, it's not very big, but this is xt and that's xt plus 1. So this is, um, this is basically saying that it takes um, what was inputted previously um, into context for the next input. So if we had, for example, um, uh, a neural network that was trained on the word steep, spelling the word steep, and it can only suggest letters from that word. And if you put in an S, it would know, OK, T comes next, because we've seen that before. And then E comes after T. Um, but when you get to the next point, what comes after E? Well, it wouldn't know whether it's an E or a P. So that's where a recurrent neural network is awesome, because it will look at everything that's come previously, and it will know, okay, we've had S, T, and E, so therefore E is next. And then... You're saying the recurrent neural network contains a state? Contains a what? State. Um, okay, so, uh, I guess the usual neural network, um, every time you put an input to it and get a hypothesis, it's independent of all the other times, right? Whereas yeah. in this case, every time you put an input to it, it kind of remembers something from the last yeah. one to start. Yeah, and don't ask me to explain how it does that because it's quite technical and there are different ways that it, different um, units that it uses because it uses something called a long short term memory unit that it can use or it can use a gated recurrent unit. Um, I went down like all these like rabbit holes trying to research all this stuff. Um, but there are some computations that it does where it decides how much of the previous stuff it seemed to remember and how much of the new stuff that is important to remember, basically, um, if that makes any sense. <laughs> um, and then a bi bi-directional recurrent network is similar, but it's actually going from both directions at once. So um, it's looking from the beginning of the word and from the end of the word. And so you've got the context of the whole word for <coughs> each, centered around each letter that you're looking at as an input, um, which is pretty cool. Um, that becomes more important, more useful, and more important when you're looking at words in sentences rather than letters in a word. I think, um, but that's hopefully that makes sense. Um, and then the other, the other thing that they used 
um, is an, something called an attention mechanism. Um, so this, if you can see this image, this is an example of it on um, one of the customer questions. And it actually looks at, it identifies out of this paragraph which sentences are the most important. So the, re the ones that are read, those are the more important sentences that's identified. And then within that first sentence, which words are more important to the overall meaning of that, se of that sentence? And it's identified those, those three there as being more important. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, so it basically hooks those things together. And this is because I'm not, is that, sorry to interrupt, I'm trying to fit on this in. No, it's fine. No, was that the same thing as we saw in the Google? So we just saw the Google to work and take the same, is that the same thing? Um, yeah, I suppose so. I don't know what, um, yeah, it's probably based on a, a similar thing. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's the importance of something, which is the same, isn't it? So yeah, yeah, I think it is the same thing. Um, so, um, so basically, this is the overall, um, or part of the overall architecture of the network they built. It's actually way more complicated than this, um, but part of it is a hierarchical attention network, which uses um, BRNNs and attention mechanisms um, nested two layers. So you've got um, a top layer. So this is where the inputs are flowing down like this. At the top, it's looking at sort of word-specific stuff, and then it builds up to sentence-specific stuff to a point where it can it can classify the entire uh, body of text in some way. Um, so it um, breaks down each sentence. It'll go through each sentence in turn. It'll break it down into words and turn that into a vector, and then it will. Um, I don't, it will use the BRNN to build a context for each word where that word is centred. It looks from both directions in that sentence to build a context for it. Then it will look at which ones are most important in that sentence, extract those into a new sentence, and then do the same thing for the sentences. So build a context of that sentence within the document, and then identify which sentences are most important to the document, and then classifies it. Which is just mind blowing. Very so, cool. So it's, it's building simplified sentences that say the same yeah. thing in it in a in a simpler way. I think so. That's my understanding. Please correct me. Uh, if so it's like a lemmatizing mm -hmm. in not not just words, but the, the sentence itself. Yeah. yeah. Um, what, so what what is the actual output like? What, what when you say it's classification of the, of that sentence into. But, so, but what 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 things actually get output? Do you know, or, or is that, are they not clear? They might not be clear on exactly it's that thing. It's exceeded my very limited. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's um, cool. I don't know to be honest. Yeah. It's, maybe it's like a. I don't know. I mean, in other classifiers, you'd have some kind of percentage probability of it being mm -hmm. one of a certain class. Mm -hmm. So here, maybe you would. Yeah, suppose you're trying to. <clears throat> you're trying to classify it as a type of question on a certain topic. Mm -hmm. So maybe. Like but, but, but so, so, so they have yeah. a finite number of, of topics I think this, so. this network can classify it and then yeah. it classifies it as one of those. Yeah, so okay. when, when you go, when you actually use the Monzo help thing, I don't know if anybody's had a play with it, um, but you'll type something in and then it will suggest a few things that it could be related to your query. So yeah, it's probably that, isn't it, I think. Okay. Um, um, so that, that was the main cool thing. The other cool thing is that um, Monzo had a similar problem to us in that they don't have enough data um, because obviously this this help thing wasn't live in their app so they had no data to train it on so what they did instead of it they used something called transfer learning and that's basically where they took um, data which was similar from some, some other source and trained their model on that so that they could then use it live so in this case it was um, um, from their customer chat um, function, um, um, yeah, queries from that, and they and they use that to train the model. So I thought um, I thought we could uh, use that at Wells Wizards. So um, I mean, we really started to look at um, the options of transcribing customer calls um, to help with chatbots, but there's probably other other ways we can use it. Um, we talked um, a little while ago about using free text boxes to establish like um, customer objectives to, to pre-populate a, a fact find. 
so maybe we could use this kind of architecture to do that and then generally we could use all of the all of the stuff in this this blog post to develop a more bespoke chatbot than api.ai so cool. that's it thanks a lot <laughs>